Hello everybody, I hope you're all well. On the 9th of October 2019, Colleen Rooney, wife of ex-England captain Wayne Rooney, tweeted this. For a few years now, someone who I trusted to follow me on my personal Instagram account has been consistently forming the Sun newspaper of my private posts and stories. There has been so much information given to them about me, my friends and my family all without my permission or knowledge. After a long time of trying to figure out who it could be, for various reasons, I had a suspicion. To try and prove this, I came up with an idea. I blocked everyone from viewing my Instagram stories except one account. Those on my private account must have been wondering why I haven't had stories on there for a while. Over the past five months, I have posted a series of false stories to see if they made their way into the Sun newspaper. And you know what? They did! The story about gender selection in Mexico, the story about returning to TV, and then the latest story about the basement flooding in my new house. It's been tough keeping it all to myself and not making any comment at all, especially when the stories have been leaked. However, I had to. Now I know for certain which accounts less individual it's come from. I have saved and screenshotted all the original stories, which clearly show just one person has viewed them. It's dot, 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 Rebecca Vardy's account. This set British Twitter ablaze. Rebecca Vardy is the wife of another English football player, Jamie Vardy. So both Colleen and Rebecca are very high profile wags. So the name Wagatha Christie was born. I am so obsessed with this meme. It's so highly detailed, but also so unfunny at the same time. <laughs> it's such a Gen X meme. It has Gen X written all over it. But it doesn't just end here. In June of 2020, it was revealed that Rebecca Vardy had launched a £1 million defamation lawsuit against Colleen Rooney. So this tweet was going to trial. And that's what I'm going to be exploring in this video today. And this video has a slightly different setup, if you couldn't tell. So first of all, we have me, camera number one. Okay, I'm gonna be sitting here, chatting about the case, giving you all the details. And then we have camera number two. Camera number two, camera number one, camera number two. Could I, uh, uh, uh. Sorry, I look so much better in this camera. Like this camera, I'm like serving. That camera over there, ooh. This one, mmm. That one, ooh. I feel so bad for editor Kath. She already has so much work to do. So if you can already tell, I have a lovely pink detective board here. Yes, I painted it myself. And we are going to be building up the case on this board with different pieces of evidence. Sorry, this is so exciting. I don't think you guys realize, Wagatha Christie is my joker. Like this is my joker. I'm being so serious right now. Until we have a complete detective board. Like guys, this is actually, this is actually genius. I got all of my information from the case from the trial judgment, which is available to read online. And I also got some pieces of evidence from the channel for dramatization of the case, which is also available to watch online. And I do just want to make it clear right now that I am not a lawyer. <laughs> you know, it's really difficult to believe. I am not a lawyer. I don't have a background in law. I've never studied law. So if there are a few little bits and pieces in here that I get wrong, sorry in advance, but also like allow it. This is just a little bit of fun. So firstly, let's introduce the players. First player we have is Colleen Rooney. Please ignore the fact that this picture is faded. I began to run out of ink. Um, this is no reflection on how I feel about Colleen Rooney. She is an Aries and she is the wife of ex-England captain Wayne Rooney. They've been dating since she was 16. They got married in 2008 and they have three children together. Here is a picture of Wayne Rooney here. I chose this picture of Wayne Rooney because someone, sorry, <laughs> someone said it looks like when the PE teacher has to do a bit of geography. <laughs> this is really funny. I'm sorry. I'm actually going to keep this picture of Wayne Rooney because it's so funny. Now, Wayne Rooney has been caught cheating on Colleen Rooney multiple times with 
workers, which has been splashed all over the tabloid. Wayne was actually once awarded £100,000 by The Sun and the News of the World in libel damages after they falsely reported that he had physically assaulted Colleen. This is important to note because clearly both Wayne and Colleen do not have good relationships with the tabloids, specifically The Sun and the News of the World. Despite we Ween's, sorry. Um, sorry, I literally turned to the camera to be like, <laughs> despite Wayne's infidelity, Colleen has always chosen to stay with him. She's done a little bit of media work and TV work between 2006 to 2010. She's also published a few books, including an autobiography. Overall, she's a very well-liked wag. She sort of has a very like girl next door. Who is that? Oh my God, it's Boots. Sorry, that scared the shit out of me. My cat is behind me in a cage. Hear me out. She broke her femur. Little Boots broke her femur. Um, so she's on cage rest for the next three weeks. So she's here chilling with me in her cage. Everyone give Boots their well wishes. We love Boots. Colleen is just very like girl next door vibes. And she's still very well liked, even if people don't agree with her taking Wayne Rooney back so many times. So let's stick them down on the board. Oh my gosh. The first person is down. Does that look okay? Is that visible? Sorry if it's not visible. I'm working with like the best that I've got. Sorry, I look so good in this camera angle. What is going on with that camera over there? Because over here, ah! Should I use my string? Should I use the string to join them together? We're gonna have to use the string to join them together. So I've got gold string for Colleen. So this is the first visual. Colleen Rooney, husband Wayne Rooney gold string between them. No, sorry guys. It's a little bit genius. You can't really see it from that angle that well. Okay, whatever, we're moving on. The next key player is of course, Rebecca Vardy. She's an Aquarius and she is married to Leicester City football player, Jamie Vardy. Jamie Vardy also played on the England squad alongside Colleen's husband, Wayne Rooney. So there's like ties here. Like this is dramatic, this is drama. And yes, I will be referring to Wayne Rooney as Colleen Rooney's husband, girl boss. Rebecca and Jamie have three children together. Rebecca has been very active in the media. She has appeared on television multiple times on shows such as I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, Good Morning Britain, Jeremy Vine, This Morning, and Dancing on Ice. And she also has a close relationship with the Sun newspaper. She even had a column with them during the 2016 Euros. Even before Wagatha Christie, Rebecca Vardy was always seen a sort of a little bit fame hungry. So let's stick them down. Okay, so if you just look on the second camera angle, we've got Rebecca Vardy down and then we have her husband, Jamie Vardy. Just before we get onto the third player, I just wanna quickly talk about WAG culture because WAG culture was absolutely huge in the UK like 20 years ago. WAGs were huge. Everyone was very invested in their lives. And if you don't know what a WAG is, it's wife and girlfriend of a footballer. A couple of notable WAGs were Victoria Beckham and Cheryl Cole. I have an absolutely iconic picture of them right here. This picture absolutely brought broke the icon scale. Nowadays, wag culture isn't as big as it used to be. And I think it's because a lot of wags nowadays are opting to keep their lives private for the sake of themselves or for the sake of their families. I also have a picture here of Cheryl Cole, Victoria Beckham and Colleen Rooney in the back there. So I'm gonna stick down the wag picture here. If we just have a look at the board here, we have Cheryl Cole and Victoria Beckham and the lines just to prove that they are all wags. They're all wags. The third player is Caroline Watt. Caroline Watt was Rebecca Vardy's good friend and agent. She had been representing Rebecca Vardy since around 2015 and she was the one that was suspected to have been leaking Colleen's private information to The Sun. Caroline Watt, Rebecca Vardy. Rebecca Vardy was represented by Hugh Tomlinson QC. I don't know why this picture is black and white. I mean, I know why it's black and white. I chose a black and white one, but compared to all the color pictures, this makes it look like that he's died, but like he isn't, he's very much alive. And Colleen Rooney was represented by David Sherborne. He is a very well-known celebrity libel lawyer. He's represented Kate Moss, Princess Diana, also Johnny Depp, oof, in his libel case against the son, which he lost. 
I'm actually really healing my inner teenager by doing this. This is so fun. <laughs> Board update. Colleen Rooney's lawyer. Rebecca Vardy's lawyer. Uh? Speaking of the sun, there is another key player to introduce, Andy Halls, who is a journalist and head of TV at the Sun newspaper. So the alleged chain of command was that Rebecca Vardy would leak information to Caroline Watt, who would then tell Andy Halls, who would then publish it in the Sun newspaper. And just in case any of you guys are from the UK and don't really know anything about the Sun, the Sun and newspapers like it, like News of the World, are absolute rags of newspapers. Honestly, calling them newspapers is like an absolute push. Like I'm using the term newspaper very liberally. Liberally. To Americanize it a little bit, The Sun is basically the Fox News of the UK. The Sun had to apologize for falsely reporting that Hillsborough survivors were pickpocketing and urinating on dead bodies. The News of the World actually shut down, I think it was over 10 years ago now, because they were hacking into Millie Dowler's phone. Millie Dowler was a missing teenager and they were listening to and deleting her voicemails, which led the police and her family to believe believe that she was still alive when she had actually been murdered. Yeah, no, absolute rags of newspapers, don't read them. And because this was a libel case, there was no jury, all the evidence would be presented to a judge who would then decide whether to dismiss the case or take the case forward award damages, I don't know. And that judge was Mrs. Justice Stein. I actually, okay, sorry, this is so stupid. I thought that her name was Justice for like a good 10 minutes. And I was like, oh my gosh, like what a good career to get into like law when your name is justice but it turns out that's what all judges are called all judges are called justice but anyways so let's get on to the actual case so Rebecca Vardy was suing Colleen Rooney for libel which is a form of defamation it just means that defamation is in writing so now it's up to Colleen's legal team to prove that the statements that she said were true and weren't defamatory and it's up to Rebecca's legal team to prove that the statement aren't true and that they were defamatory. I was really struggling with how to present this case because there is just so much evidence and it's so easy to get it all jumbled up. So I thought the way we could present this is we could first of all talk about the events running up to Colleen's sting operation and expose tweet. We can then talk about Rebecca's alleged history of leaking information and then Rebecca Vardy's legal team's evidence against Colleen Rooney as to why her information and statement was defamatory. Before the trial, both Colleen Rooney and Rebecca Vardy signed a statement basically agreeing that Caroline Watt could have single-handedly leaked the information herself because she had access to Rebecca Vardy's Instagram account. But Rebecca Vardy still affirms that she had no idea about it and she does not condone leaking people's private information. And Colleen does still believe that Rebecca did leak the information too, but they both signed the statement saying that it could have been Caroline Watt who did it single-handedly. Something which is very interesting about this case is that a majority of the information is WhatsApp messages exchanged between Rebecca Vardy and her agent, Caroline Watt. I printed out this WhatsApp bit sign so big. Where am I gonna put it? This board is really big, but I'm beginning to realize that I printed off these pictures way too big. All right, we're just gonna have to stick this to the side for now. And another interesting part about this case is that large amounts of evidence were missing. Rebecca Vardy said that she lost six months worth of WhatsApp messages when she changed phones. And Caroline was not present at the trial, by the way. She did not have to take the stand, did not have to give evidence. She said that she was too ill to attend. Caroline dropped her phone into the North Sea and didn't notify Colleen's legal team until four months after. Sorry. <laughs> Now, Colleen Rooney also had missing evidence. She was missing WhatsApp messages between her and her agent. I think her agent's called Rachel Monk, but I could have that wrong, which she said she had lost all these messages when she had changed phones, but she did provide messages from her agent's phone as an alternative. 
First of all, let's go through the evidence running up to the sting operation. So Rebecca Vardy had access to Colleen Rooney's private Instagram account from January 2017. And between 2017 to 2019, Colleen Rooney noticed that information from her private Instagram account was being leaked to the Sun newspaper. A picture of her husband Wayne and their kids, and also a picture of her crashing her car. In January of 2019, Colleen posted a screenshot of the car crash article on The Sun to her private Instagram saying, someone on here is selling stories again to this scum of a paper. She's so real for that. And posted on her public Twitter, someone on my private Instagram's seen pictures and is telling or selling stories to a certain newspaper. It's happened several times now over the past couple of years. It's sad to think someone who I have accepted to follow me is betraying me for either money or to keep a relationship with the press. Colleen described this tweet as a warning shot. And at this time, Colleen Rooney did suspect that Rebecca Vardy was the person who was leaking her information to The Sun for a multitude of reasons, such as she believed that Rebecca wanted to be close friends with her for her own personal interests. Rebecca also had had a close relationship with The Sun and that she had staged paparazzi photos in the past. Now, Rebecca Vardy saw this tweet and WhatsApped her agent, Caroline Watt, saying, Saying, you seen Colleen's Twitter? Kiss. Finding out that Americans don't use kisses on their messages like was completely life-changing to me. I thought that every single one of my American mutuals hated me, but it turns out that Americans don't just use kisses. No, such a victim. Poor Colleen. She doesn't even do her Twitter. Funny that her PR admitted she has been in a car crash. <laughs> the paper didn't even blame her for it either. I know. And it wasn't someone that she trusted. It was me. And I just wanna really, 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 really highlight this last message that Caroline Watt sent to Rebecca Vardy. And it wasn't someone that she trusted. It was me. Colleen actually ended up removing Rebecca as a follower on her private Instagram account. And Caroline Watt noticed. Babe, has Colleen unfollowed you? OMG. I just saw, wow, what a <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm going to message her. I would leave it a while now and then in a few weeks message her and ask if you have offended her. I bet because you had that cervical cancer chat in the sun, she has unfollowed you, kiss. She thinks it's me doing stories on her of all the people on her Instagram for, for sorry, <laughs> Leanne Brown, etc. kiss. I know, that needs to get over herself, sorry. That's falling out material. I wouldn't say that though. If she thinks you are looking at her page, she'll think it's you. If you leave it a week or so and then say you realize you hadn't seen a post for ages, then it won't look obvious. Unless someone told her it came from you. I don't think anyone ever would. Andy never would. And I wouldn't tell anyone but the son. And you would think she'd message you if someone said your agent had done it, surely. That's suspicious. Also, the son had that pic of her car in America anyway. Not that she knows that. I know, I'm just offended that she thinks I did it. How can you be offended? She did it. Rebecca Vardy continues to message Caroline Watt saying, I mean, F -f -f Dawn fucking Ward is still on there. Rebecca Vardy continues to message Caroline Watt saying that Colleen Rooney deserves everything that she gets and hopes she gets sold out massively. I just messaged Andy Halls and he said, maybe she noticed we were together with them and Dan Wooten at the NTAs. I never usually message her and say hi. Maybe I should say something about Rosie. By the way, Rosie is Colleen's sister who had Rett syndrome and died in 2013 when she was just 14 years old. Now, Caroline Watt actually gives Rebecca advice on how to message Colleen Rooney. And Rebecca takes on this advice, basically follows it like to the detail and messages Colleen saying, hey hun, I hope you and your family are well and doing okay over there. Snow looks unbelievable. I did lose women today and the booker mentioned you saying they would love to have you on when you are in the UK. Said had no idea but would pass it on just in case you had any charity stuff going on or anything like that. Kiss. 
Caroline and Rebecca continue to exchange WhatsApp messages. If she does try to say it or that it was me and it's undeniably obvious, what we'll do is say I left the company I was working for in Jan and one of the girls in the office has my old laptop that had your password saved on it so it will have been them and now you'll have to change everything. Kiss. Okay, just don't know how she ever would know unless Halls has leaked it in case please don't give him the Mr. X stuff kiss. I've messaged her. This was in reference to her messaging Colleen Rooney. It's delivered. I swear she better not me off. In March of 2019, Colleen began following Rebecca on her account again, but had not reinstated Rebecca as a follower. This prompted Rebecca to message Colleen saying, hi, my love. Hope you're all okay. I saw you had unfollowed me and I wasn't following you anymore on Instagram. Just wanted to ask if I'd done something or offended you in any way. Literally only noticed the other day. Colleen said that this message made her feel suspicious because at the time, Rebecca had over 400,000 Instagram followers and was following over a thousand people, which means that she was probably actively checking Colleen's account to even notice that she was taken off as a follower or that Colleen had unfollowed her. This led Colleen to believe that Rebecca was checking her private Instagram account and leaking that information to the son. Colleen responds saying that her kids play on her phone a lot, so it must've been one of them, and she reinstated Rebecca as a follower. This was a lie. Colleen reinstated Rebecca as a follower because she wanted to be 100% certain that Rebecca was the person who was leaking her private information to the son. After she reinstated Rebecca as a follower, Colleen made a private Instagram story saying, we're back, took the kids home, we finally have a babysitter. Just over a week later, Colleen's agent messaged her saying, just a quick one, had journalists from the sun, ugh, um, sorry, that was really aggressive, on saying they'd been told that you and Wayne are going out on lots of dates in Washington now as you've found a babysitter you trust. Obviously no comment from us, but just wanted to run it past you. Kiss, 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 kiss. I forgot that I had a picture of a babysitter. I'm pinning it down. This made Colleen even more suspicious of Rebecca Vardy. Even though the story was visible to all of her followers, as soon as she reinstated Rebecca as a follower, another one of her stories got leaked to the sun. But remember, there is still no direct evidence that Rebecca leaked any of these stories. This is when Colleen decided to set up her sting operation. She blocked everyone from viewing her stories apart from one account, Rebecca Vardy's account. Colleen then began to post false stories to see if any of them ended up in the sun. Colleen then proceeded to post four false stories. One of those stories being about gender selection in Mexico. Rebecca then messaged her agent Caroline Watt about this gender selection story. Colleen's Instagram, Wonder if they're going for baby five. I know. Although maybe it isn't that because she's with her brother and his missus and all the kids. Possibly. Maybe she just wants to put it on to see if anyone gives it to the media. So my camera died and then my laptop died. It's half 11 on a Saturday night and I'm sat here doing a Wagatha Christie deep dive. I actually need to get a life. So we left off with... Colleen Rooney posting something about gender selection in Mexico and then Caroline and Rebecca exchanged some WhatsApp messages about it. And this story, the gender selection in Mexico, ended up getting leaked to the sun four months after Colleen posted it. And it's suspected that Caroline and Rebecca waited that long because they didn't want to draw any attention to themselves. But also these WhatsApp messages show that Rebecca was more than aware that Caroline was using her account to look at Colleen's private Instagram account. Rebecca denies leaking this story to the sun, but does also acknowledge that Caroline could have been behind it. Oh, sorry, Boots is literally going. Rebecca actually said she has no recollection of even seeing a gender selection post and that instead her and Caroline were talking about a picture which Colleen posted on her story of her holding a baby girl, which was visible to all of her followers. Colleen then made her private Instagram stories visible to all of her followers again. And then some of stories ended up being leaked to the sun again. One of her at Soho Farmhouse and another one about how she had been had a difficult year living in America. Because of all of these leaks, Colleen 
decided to pick up the sting operation again because she wanted to get a few more blatant examples to add to those she already had. Colleen then uploaded more than 50 false stories to her private Instagram story, which was only visible to Rebecca Vardy's account. And one of them made it into the Sun newspaper, a story about her basement flooding. And this then leads us to the 9th of October, 2019, where Colleen posted the it's dot, 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 Rebecca Vardy's account tweets and Caroline messaged Rebecca straight away. Message her now and ask her what the fuck this is. Who is that? <laughs> Colleen posted it on Twitter. Wow, that's war. She has just posted it now. Just say you have allowed a company to access it for sponsored posts and a former social media agency that you've worked with too. I want to call her PR. Caroline then tells Rebecca to send Colleen a message along these lines. As I have just said to you on the phone, I wish you had called me if you thought this. I never speak to anyone about you as various journalists who have asked me over the years can vouch for. If you think this was happening or you could have told me and I could have changed my passwords to see if it stopped. Over the years, various people have had access to my Insta and just this week I found out I was following people I didn't know and have never followed myself. I'm not being funny, but I don't need the money. What would I gain from selling stories on you? I liked you a lot, Colleen, and I'm so upset that you've chosen to do this, especially when I'm heavily pregnant. I'm disgusted that I'm even having to deny this. You should have called me the first time this happened. Being as Rebecca Vardy was suing Colleen Rooney for libel, despite all of the evidence presented, Colleen's legal team still had to paint a picture that Rebecca Vardy had a history of leaking people's private information. Firstly, there is Rebecca's connections to the Sun newspaper. She even had a column with them during the 2016 Euros and both her and her agent were photographed with them in their booth during the NTAs. So I don't know why I was so confused by that sentence. <laughs> So um, I'm really tired and I really want to go to bed. This evidence is definitely worth noting, but it's nowhere near enough to prove that Rebecca has a history of leaking private information. Colleen's team also wanted to paint Rebecca as sort of an unsavory character, someone who doesn't really respect people's private information. And one of those stories had to do with Peter Andre. In 2004, Rebecca Vardy was interviewed by the News of the World, where she spoke about having sex with British singer Peter Andre, where she said he was shaved, slobbery, lasts five minutes, then falls asleep, and compared his penis to a miniature chipolata. Rebecca's response to this was that she was really young when she did the interview, and she actually really regrets it. Harpreet Robertson, an FA official, was called to the stand to share her experience with Rebecca Vardy. During the 2016 Euros, all the wags and families of the footballers actually are sat apart because they don't want to draw a bunch of pest attention to them. They want to focus purely on the game. What do they call it again? There's a name. They say like the good game. No, the beautiful game. <laughs> The good game and Rebecca Vardy and her, it was either her friends or her family or a mix of both, sat behind Colleen Rooney. These were not her assigned seats. These were actually Harpreet's seats. They were Harpreet's and security seats. And many people suspect that Rebecca Vardy intentionally sat behind Colleen Rooney to draw press attention. And when Harpreet told Rebecca and co that they had to move, they were in their assigned seats, she was allegedly told to to fuck off. Rebecca denies these allegations and says that Harpreet must have gotten her wires crossed and she must have gotten confused. These are just stories questioning Rebecca's character, that she will try to further her fame by any means necessary, but none of these stories explicitly paint that Rebecca Vardy likes to leak people's private information. Well, let's get on to the leaks. Oh, I should have printed off a picture of a leak. That would have been a really bad joke. <laughs> leak number one, the body positivity post. Here are some WhatsApp exchanges, of course, between Rebecca and her agent, Caroline Watts. Image omitted. <laughs> this makes me fume. Does she not realize she is part of the problem? Photoshop pictures that make you look five sizes smaller than you actually are kiss. <laughs> oh my god, she's got fucking cheek. Kiss. What a joke. 
kiss. Sorry, I'm going to stop saying kiss. Can we not leak a story? Could only do it with pictures, but Flynet have legally agreed to delete those pics. Now, Rebecca actually has an explanation for this. When she was saying, can we not leak a story? She wasn't actually talking about leaking a story. Instead, she wanted to do a story that promoted positive body imaging and was actually asking, can we not actually do a story on positive body campaigning? I mean, I don't know. It seems like, it, it seems pretty legit to me actually. So we have alleged leak number one. And as you can see from the camera over here, I feel like I haven't given you guys any love recently. We have Rebecca Vardy bounces down to Caroline Watt and then bounces down to leak number one. Leak number two is about Riyad Mahrez. Riyad is a football player who played for Leicester City, which is the team that Rebecca's husband, Jamie, plays for. And here are WhatsApp exchanges between Rebecca and Caroline. Mahrez not turned up for training again. Lads are fuming. Really? Why don't you tell Rob Dorset? Rob Dorset is a Sky sports reporter. Just don't want it coming back on me. I can tell someone. Yeah, do it. Okay, kiss. <laughs> Rebecca says that because the press were all over Riyad Mahrez at the time, because he was apparently leaving Leicester football team, I don't, Leicester City football team. I don't really know what's going on. Sorry, I don't know anything about football. Basically, because it was common knowledge and the press were all over it, she basically just saw it as a little bit of harmless gossip. Leak number three is the infidelity leak. All of these names have obviously been replaced with pseudonyms, but... More WhatsApp messages exchanged between Rebecca and Caroline. OMG, have you seen how badly Mrs. F is behaving? I'm actually disgusted with her. I haven't seen it. I'll look. Leak the story about her shagging Mr. G behind Mr. H's back. I tried before, but the son already knew about it and couldn't prove it as usual. Ugh. <laughs> Rebecca says that her asking Caroline to leak a story was just a joke. She was joking. She was only joking. See, when you actually look at the board and you see the lack of strings and pictures on Colleen's side versus the sheer amount of string and pictures and pins on Rebecca's side, it's actually baffling to believe that, sorry, I like that. It's actually baffling to believe that, remember, Rebecca is the one suing Colleen Rooney. It's not the other way around. When I was researching this, I forgot constantly that Rebecca was the one that was suing Colleen Rooney. Leak number four is about football player Danny Drinkwater. Who, I don't even need to say. We're saying more WhatsApp messages. Story, Danny Drinkwater arrested. For what? Crashed his car drunk with two girls in it. Both in hospital, one with broken ribs. Fuck, when? He's only just been let out the cells last night. I want paying for this. <laughs> Rebecca and Caroline exchange more messages about what damage the car was done, what police station he's in. Just sent it to Andy Halls. He's in big trouble. He replied instantly and said news are already on it. They have a game tonight. Someone leaked it from the police station. Fuck, someone's already tipped it. OMG, they don't waste any time. He was due to pick up his little boy today as well. Shit, apparently he refused to stop the car and let the girls out. It's already the sun's front page tomorrow. Holy fuck, is he John's client? I'm fuming I didn't give it to you earlier. No, he's not. Me too, that would have been a fortune. Do you know his address? Could get splash on him for some pics. Rebecca tells Caroline that she doesn't know Danny's address, but then proceeds to message Danny on Instagram saying like, oh my God, Danny, what have you done? Ugh, what are you like? Um, sorry. <laughs> and we are led to believe that she was messaging Danny so she could try and get his address of him and sell it to the paparazzi. Rebecca does acknowledge that she intended to leak this information, but she said that drink driving is a very sensitive subject for her, that it affects her very personally because her ex-husband actually killed two people in a drink driving accident. And when she said, oh, I want paying for this, she said that it was just like a fleeting thought and that it didn't mean anything. But if we just go back to splash pictures for a second, sorry, I keep shaking my camera. I'm assuming that splash pictures is some sort of paparazzi company and there are actually WhatsApp messages between 
Rebecca and Caroline during the 2016 Euros where Rebecca is telling Caroline where they're all going to be so they can be photographed by the paparazzi together and then when the other wags are telling Rebecca to post pictures of them so these paparazzi images lose value Rebecca successfully stalled them so the pictures could be sold to newspapers I'm assuming or published etc as you guys can probably tell the evidence sorry I'm just looking at the board the evidence against Rebecca Vardy is truly it's truly mounting up <laughs> and bear in mind there was a lot of missing evidence there was six months worth of whatsapp exchanges completely gone off Rebecca's fire and Caroline dropped her phone into the North Sea let's not forget that like I know I keep saying it but it's so easy to forget that Rebecca Vardy is the one suing Colleen Rooney but let's actually talk about the evidence used against Colleen Rooney in court. A lot of the evidence used against her wasn't actually mentioned in the trial judgment. I got most of this from the uh, Channel 4 dramatization of the case. And I do just wanna say, in my opinion, in my professional legal opinion, the evidence against Colleen Rooney is not that strong or substantial, but I don't particularly blame Rebecca Vardy's legal team for this, because in my opinion, they were making the best of a bad situation situation and they were just doing with what they had, the very limited supplies and resources that they had. Rebecca's legal team focused a lot on why Colleen suspected Rebecca in the first place, being as her private Instagram did have over 300 followers on it. Colleen said that it was because Rebecca had a close relationship with the son. It was because she always seemed, you know, that she wanted to be famous. No topics were ever off the table for her. And also she recalls when her husband, Wayne, Rooney during the 2016 Euros had to have a word with Rebecca's husband Jamie Vardy and tell him to tell Rebecca to calm down a little bit because her attention her behavior was drawing sort of negative attention and Rebecca's legal team their evidence was that apparently according to both oh my god this boots fucking hell sorry hello do you need to go to the toilet all right let me take you to the toilet sorry guys say hi Rebecca's legal team claimed that a FaceTime conversation happened between Jamie and Rebecca when Rebecca told Jamie, oh, have you told me off yet? And then Wayne Rooney came onto the FaceTime and was like, no, I haven't. And they were joking and bantering around, you know? Sorry, she looks really uncomfortable, but like she's not. If she was uncomfortable, she'd be like meowing and stuff. And Rebecca's team also used evidence of Wayne telling the press that him having to tell Jamie Vardy off was a load of rubbish. Now, Wayne denies that this FaceTime conversation ever happened. And he also says the reason he told the press that the FaceTime was a load of rubbish was because, or the telling off was a load of rubbish rather, was because of his bad experiences with the tabloids. He wanted to do everything that he could to protect his teammates from press and the tabloids. Rebecca's team also argued that there are businesses following, following Colleen Rooney, so it could have been them. Again, why did she suspect Rebecca Vardy? out for everyone. I don't really see how this is relevant because she didn't accuse Rebecca Vardy off the bat without blocking her from the stories and collecting her evidence. But again, I know that they're just making the best of a bad situation. And Rebecca actually said that all the businesses that follow her are just small businesses. The accounts are just ran by individual people. I just find it really interesting how Rebecca's legal team are choosing to focus on these really, really small details in the case, such as why why Colleen suspected Rebecca in the first place, or this alleged FaceTime conversation that happened during the 2016 Euros, like five years ago. And it's very clear to me that they're focusing on these very small details because they haven't got anything else to work with. Rebecca's legal team also argued that out of the 50 stories that Colleen posted, only one of them was leaked because one of them referring to the TV appearance, she actually got it mixed up and it actually wasn't in reference to her private Instagram. Sorry if this sounds a bit confusing. And the other one about the gender selection was actually seen by one other account that she forgot to block from her private Instagram stories. So if Rebecca was so hell bent on leaking Colleen's information, why didn't she just leak all of the stories rather than just one out of 50? Rebecca's legal team also argued that it is apparently common knowledge amongst celebrities that 
they have shared access to their Instagram accounts, whether it's their managers, their agents, talent agencies, businesses, etc. So how would she know for sure that it was Rebecca Vardy herself leaking this information? Another piece of evidence which was used, which I can't hold up right now because I'm too busy holding my cat like she's a baby, like you're a baby, yes, is that on Colleen's phone, she had saved a few Wagatha Christie memes and Rebecca's legal team used this as evidence that Colleen was enjoying the abuse that Rebecca was receiving. Um, do you want me to put you down? Yeah. It was a meme similar to this one. I don't think this was the exact one, but it was similar. And they also argued that because Colleen hadn't spoken out against the trolling that she endorsed it and perhaps encouraged it. And Colleen said that she actually couldn't say anything online because she was already sent a legal letter only, I'm pretty sure it was just a few days after she posted her tweet and her lawyers advised her not to say anything publicly. So all the evidence is laid out. It's so beautiful. Oh my God. <laughs> now, I'm sure we can all guess this, but the claim was dismissed by the judge. And Rebecca Vardy, I believe that she actually has to pay all of Colleen Rooney's legal fees. And I think Rebecca Vardy whacked up over 1 million pounds in legal fees herself. I believe that Colleen Rooney has some sort of documentary coming out on Disney Plus about it. Rebecca Vardy still denies it to this day. Um, is there anything else? No, just the fact that like, guys, this was actually history. Like this was history. Like this was such, like guys, this was such for the Huns. Like how much is it? Like this is for the Huns, okay? Like I am such a Hun. So this like fed my soul. Like you don't even realize. Like this is a spiritual experience, I think. Sorry, I'm going, I'm doing a bit much. Sorry, I just really, sorry. My look is so wag. Like, oh my gosh. Like look, I've got the England colors on too wag but yes i hope you guys enjoyed this video it was a little bit rocky filming because my camera died and my laptop died or something but i really really hope that you guys enjoyed this video i had so much fun filming it and making it and i'm gonna keep this board for the rest of my life maybe i should auction it none of you guys want this but you know what? i'm gonna keep it for myself i'm gonna i'm gonna display it in my home but yeah give it some love if you enjoyed it little like little subscribe little comment follow my socials and i will see you soon for our next video Bye.